want to talk to you today about opportunity. Right? Uh, we've all been through an extremely tough, tough year. Uh, the Great Flood was something that nobody really expected, right? Uh, there were a lot of factors that went into it that I'm not going to get into today, but we all know that it was hard, right? But what, what's going to happen on the other end? Where are we going to go from here? So I'm going to invite y'all for a second to sit down uh, with a seven-year-old version of me uh, and my mother and father at our breakfast table. And uh, my father, who was a large and intimidating man, uh, asked you, what are your thoughts on Bill Clinton? I'm seven. I say, he's a pretty cool guy. He plays the saxophone. My dad says, what the hell is that? What do you think about his policies, uh, the things that he's after? And it was at that point that I realized that facts were what my life was going to be based on because I wasn't going to get to participate in conversation with two business owners and two politically savvy people without them. Mm -hmm. Facts are interesting. Facts are puzzle pieces, right? We build things on facts. Some people like to change the way the piece looks, but as we've seen, if you change the way a piece looks, the picture doesn't look right. So facts were something that I was given early. Not just a singular fact, but multiple facts. You've got to know all the facts, right? And that's my legacy. I'm a publisher, along with my mother, of our local newspaper. Now the interesting thing you'll see here is this. There's more than one section to our paper. There's more than one section to this community. All the information we put, except for my opinion, of course, in our paper is based upon facts that we collect, we write. But they're all important, right? All members of the community are important. Their perception may be a little different from someone else. They may hang their hat on something different than some, somebody else, the person living right next to them. But it's still important, it's still part of what makes us a community. Now here's the interesting thing. When was the last time you were staying there having a conversation with somebody? And you heard them say, let me tell you something. And you knew that this person had the answer. They were about to tell you the answer to that problem. The one singular answer that was going to answer that question and all questions that would come after that, right? Well, we all know that usually that's not true, right? There are many, many, many facets to every question. Dale Carnegie says that the best way to get the answer is to continue to ask questions, right? It's built upon facts. So there is no one puzzle piece. I would posit to you that there are multiple puzzle pieces. The interesting thing about what our community leaders have done is that they have sort of latched on to this unbridled growth post-Katrina, right? Katrina happened, devastating. Caused people to move. A lot of people moved to Baton Rouge. A lot of those people moved here. So we have a lot of new people here, but there are a lot of good things happening, right? First positive, we have innovative and improving schools. This particular picture is of a nice lady from Lyle Oak showing a kid from Denham, a rival high school, where he needs to go in the morning when they had to platoon together after the flood. It was great. It was a good picture. It was hard. It was hard on those kids, it was hard on those parents, it was hard on our community, but we made it, right? It's good stuff, we have the teacher of the year in the house, she'll be talking to you later. Constantly involving shopping opportunities, right around Katrina, we got Bass Pro, right? Bass Pro has opened up doors to all sorts of things, right? Junior Crossing, more shopping around Bass Pro. People are continuing to come here, which we all know makes the people who use our tax dollars, including this beautiful library, very happy. Expansion of industry and employment. I know that our friends at Livingston Economic Development love this one. Uh, and it's good too because it keeps people here, right? Keeps people employed. Uh, this particular picture I happen to like because I know two of the gentlemen in it made them very uncomfortable. Uh, this is Mark Brower, who is the distribution facility for McDonald's opening at the industrial park in Walker. Now the very interesting thing about this is, is since they opened that, it opened the door for grants for them to expand the industrial park, bring more employment opportunities, more companies here. Very cool stuff. Now, that unbridled growth is not without its negatives. Who sits in traffic? 
we all sit in traffic, traffic's great, right? It's a lovely time. Uh, it's very interesting if you get on the interstate in the morning to go to Baton Rouge. Uh, the people are very much resigned to their fate. Uh, the most impressive scene I've ever seen was a lady putting on her makeup, eating a sausage biscuit, and Facebooking. Uh, incredible. I could never do that. Uh, but we're trying to keep up, right? And it's hard. Drainage. This is another problem. And not just flood, folks. This picture is from an afternoon and evening rain about six weeks ago. That's eight hours after the rain stopped, right? The parish council recently has put on the ballot and approved it for vote by we the people in the fall on new drainage districts. There's tax that comes with that. You know, it's pretty anti-tax right now. But our drainage isn't great. It's not great at all. A complaint from a lot of people, including a lot of people that have been here for a while, is a lack of culture, right? We do have some good things that we can latch on to, the library, for instance, our schools. Uh, but what about culture? What about keeping people here? A lot of people have moved here into those big, sprawling new neighborhoods to send their kids to school or to find a nice house, big bang for their buck. But they're not engaged. They don't engage here. You know, there's a perception problem with Livingston Parish for a variety of different reasons. Uh, I know John's going to talk to you all about that later. But there's something missing. There's something missing between the core people that live here and the people who have moved here but won't engage, right? It's the 80-20 rule. So how do you take that 80% and try to get 100, 1,000 to re-engage? Even after the flood, there's still over 120,000 people that live in this parish, right? As of 2013, there was a study. Two out of three leave to go work somewhere else every day. It's part of the reason we have traffic problems. So I'll return to this picture. Is there really one answer? No, probably not. Is there one reason why Livingston Parish is great? No. Is there one reason why Livingston Parish could improve? Not at all. But where do you go, right? Well, I would posit to you that Livingston Parish looks more like this. An unfinished puzzle, right? Imagine yourself for a second. You come into the breakfast room Sunday morning, grab a, grab a cup of coffee. You've worked deep into the night on a puzzle. You caught some fire, but you finally ran out of steam, right? Sounds like a lot of people after the flood, right? But you come back fresh, you're feeling good about what you did, the picture is starting to come together. The problem we have here is this. All of these different sections that are being built along the edge, that are coming out from the edge, are all different entities that we have, right? We have, par we have municipalities, the parish council, uh, economic development, the chamber. You know, we even have the people within the same courthouse who I would say probably don't have a unified plan going forward except try to keep up. It's a tough thing to do. It really is. I mean, our population has almost doubled in 10 years and is expected to double again in the next 10. It's a hard thing to keep up with. What does it require? Vision. Leadership. Right? Of course. You have to have a leader. Someone with an idea. Where's it going to go forward? No, I'm not that person. I'm not marketing for myself. Please don't think that. Um, but there has to be a direction. There has to be some sort of collective idea of where we're going to go. Right? And then someone who can bring it all together. All of those people, because they all have a part to play. Walker and Denham have their part to play. The parish has its part to play. The sheriff has his part to play. All of them working together. Now, Denham Springs, in a way, got lucky. FEMA has set up a community development plan where they're inviting citizens to come to them, bring ideas, right? Now the neat thing about this is we've all heard of or been a part of those plans that have real pie in the sky ideas and end up getting scrapped because it's not gonna happen. One of the wonderful things about this is that FEMA is going to come to us, come to the community at the end in a public meeting and say, we can do this, but we cannot do this. 
so they'll actually move forward with things that are realistic. Now, I particularly like this one because it, they call it a tabletop exercise. You can only imagine what it's like for the mayor and the building inspector to be sitting there rolling dice while the FEMA guy's in a row playing Game Master. It's great. <laughs> but here's the other interesting thing, right? That is Livingston Parish. It's huge. 500 square miles. Over 500 miles of navigable waterways. There are more municipalities than Denham. A thank you. And it's interesting, right, that there is so much space here, but it's so different. It's so diverse, right? A lot of different people. Much like New Orleans, which is down here in the bottom right, there are a lot of different types of people. New Orleans is having its own problems, right? I'm not going to get into that, but it is. Baton Rouge, our next door neighbor, has their own problems, right? They're losing citizens to our parish, at least to come live. Lafayette, I would say, from a cultural standpoint, has taken advantage of all that, continuing to do festivals, these kinds of things. Bring people over there. Unfortunately, I couldn't fit them on the map. But it's something to look at, something to consider. But it's not necessarily the core thing that keeps us together here in the parish. It's not. What is it? Schools. This is Superintendent Rick Winston. Right? This was a speech about eight weeks ago where he declared not only did we survive the great flood? We did better. And it's true. All of these schools here in the parish, whether they flooded or not, improved. What an accomplishment. Wow. It's amazing, right? Denver Springs High School will be awarded, uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to tell you this or not, in a couple of weeks uh, for expanding their AP program. Fastest growing in the state. How cool is that? Live Oak, highly touted. Albany, highly touted. Springfield, Holden, Moripaw, nationally recognized schools. Very cool, right? Three pictures here, which tell a thousand words, right? All of which come from different parts of our paper, different parts of the community, right? Holden won a state softball championship, won, with a freshman pitcher by the way. Incredible. Fun to watch. Albany girls basketball went to the state championship. We had all sorts of improvement on that end. This is Denver Springs High School. They graduated on time. On time. Those kids who thought that they might not get to go to college are going to. They graduated on time. This here is Denver Springs Elementary. Now this girl looks like she's about ready to go to lunch. She's tired of that. that <laughs> but this this campus was amazing. It popped up right next to our office, off Hatchell Lane, Stem Springs Elementary. They had separated these kids into three elementary schools, right, while they had to put this together. But it turned into a beautiful campus, right? And these kids finished school. They got to come back together for the second half of the year and finish school. So the question becomes, what is the opportunity? What is it really? What are we really looking for here? And the answer is a unified community, right? A unified presence here to push Livingston Parish forward. Not to keep up, but to go somewhere. And I would say that it starts with the schools. They're amazing. They do great things every year. And they have all sorts of abilities to host certain things, but there has to be a leader. And it starts there. And from there, we can bring the whole community together and hopefully one day finish the puzzle. Thank you.